I'm going to retire by age 40. Do you want to know how? In this video, I'm going to talk about my long-term financial goals and how achieving those financial goals will allow me to retire by age 40. You'll also learn some tips for how you can set yourself up to retire early as well. Hi, I'm Shayna, and if you're interested in more videos like this one, go ahead and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can be notified when I put out more financial videos like this one. This year I turned 32 and I plan to retire by the age of 40. So I have eight years before I can retire. And so I have some things that need to get done in eight years. So a lot of times people think about their yearly goals or some of their short term goals, but we rarely think, of, think about those longer term goals that might be five to 10 years out. But it's really important to envision your life and what you want for the long term. So clearly I've already envisioned myself at the age of 40 being retired. But in order to get there, I need to work on some smaller goals. And so by setting this longer term goal, I now know that I need to figure out smaller goals in between there. And it gives me something to work towards. And so obviously I have some things that I need to get done. And these goals that I'm going to share in this video, they're also long term, but they're not super long either. And so some of them I plan to achieve within the next three to five years. But those are long term goals that will eventually help me get to my super long term goal of retiring by age 40. What's one financial goal that you hope to achieve within the next five years? Think about it for a moment and then drop down in the comment section and write down the goal that you hope to achieve in the fi next five years. You may have heard this before, <laughs> write the vision and make it plain. So by dropping down in the comment section, <laughs> you're writing out the vision and making it plain and you'll most likely achieve that goal. So I love to see in the comment section a bunch of goals that everyone has for the next five years because I want all of us to make our goals come true. My first long term goal is to be debt free. And I know it's very normal nowadays to carry around debt. Everyone has student loan debt and they think that they're going to have it for the rest of their lives. And actually the average American has about $137,000 in debt. So it's very normal for people to have debt. And actually Dave Ramsey likes to say this a lot that if you're normal, you have debt. And so I actually wanna be one of the weird people. I want to be debt free. I don't wanna have any debt whatsoever. And so in order to be debt free, I need to pay off $65,000 in debt. I have a student loan and a car loan that I need to pay off, and then I will be debt free. And so far, I have paid off about $42,000 in debt. And if you want to know more about my debt history, I have a video that I'll link up in the cards above that you can check out to find out how much debt I was in to begin with and how I got to this point where now I only have $65,000 in debt. I said now I only have as this as if it's just a little bit amount of money, but I have been able to be successful at paying off a good amount of, of debt so far. But you can learn more about that in that video. But that's my first goal is to be debt free. I want to get rid of the debt and I want to be weird. I want to be one of the people that has the luxury to not have to owe anybody anything. My second long-term goal is to have a six month fully funded emergency fund. And so right now I have about a $1,000 emergency fund. And really that's not a true emergency fund. I want to have a larger emergency fund so that if anything happened, I was able to, you know, sustain myself and live without much of a difference while I'm able to, you know, find another job or find other sources of income in the interim time. And so it's advised that people have anywhere from a three to a nine month, and even some people say 12 month emergency fund. But my goal is to really just have a six month emergency fund based off of my total expenses for six months. And so my um, average expense every month is about $2,000. And that's talking about like rent, electricity, 
um, food and stuff like that. And so to have a fully funded six month emergency fund, I would need anywhere from like twelve to $15,000. And so that's the goal that I plan to achieve once I have paid off all of my debt. And so I hope to be debt free with a fully funded emergency fund in the near future. My third long-term financial goal is to buy a house. And so buying a house is very important when it comes to generational wealth. Actually for black people, they tend to have less wealth in general, and especially generational wealth that can pass on to future generations because they are not homeowners. And so it's very important for me to be able to have a home that I own. It's also important to me because I know how, you know, it's very important to have shelter. It's super important to have shelter and you never want to have that type of shelter ripped from underneath you and you have to either downgrade or be homeless. And so having somewhere that you can call your home, your home is super important. My fourth financial goal is to pay cash for a wedding. So currently I am in a serious relationship, but I'm not engaged, but I'm already planning for the future. Cause if you plan to fail, then you fail to plan. <laughs> so, and obviously that's what this whole video is about, right? But yeah, I hope to get married one day. And I, I know a lot of people, they tend to go into debt for a wedding. And I would hate to start off a marriage with a bunch of debt. And so I really would like to pay cash for a wedding. The statistic is that 76% of couples go into debt for their wedding. And the average wedding costs about $25,000 right now. And it can range anywhere from, you know, like $15,000 to $32,000 for the, I guess, the average type of wedding. So can you imagine that most couples are starting off their marriage with anywhere from $25,000 in debt? Like I would hate to be starting that off. And then just think about it. That's just the debt from the wedding. A lot of people bring in student loan debt, they bring in car loans, they bring in all types of debt, credit card debt. And then can you imagine to add on an additional $25,000 onto that existing debt that each person brought into the relationship and start off your marriage like that? It can be super overwhelming and I do not want finances to be the demise of a marriage that I have in the future. So by paying in cash, I hope to eliminate that type of burden. Goal number five is to save over half of my income every single year. And so obviously this would come after I've become debt free and I've purchased the house and paid cash for a wedding because at that point I will have a lot of disposable income that I can put towards savings. So how I would do this is I would max out on all the retirement investment accounts that are out there. And then the remaining money that I have left over, I would put into mutual funds or certificate of deposits or savings accounts in order to get to the goal of saving up over half of my income. And so that sounds like a lot of money <laughs> because really my goal is to save up worse to 80% of my income. But saving up to half of my income is just a lot. It's mind blowing, right? You're probably like, what? <laughs> like, who does that? And the reason why that probably sounds insane is because the average American, they have less than $4,000 in savings. And people tend to even have less than $1,000 that they can easily reach towards at any given moment. And so it sounds crazy to want to save upwards to 80,000 or 80% of my income or even 50% of my income. It sounds crazy, but it's definitely possible when I become debt free because I'll have tons of money and hopefully I'll have tons of income as well. <laughs> and so I'll be able to do that. And it's super important to be able to do that in order to reach my goal of retiring early because I would need that nest egg that I can draw on during retirement to sustain myself. My final long-term goal is to save $1.4 million. So obviously that goes very hand in hand with the previous goal of saving over half of my income. So the assumption would be that 
I would be married because yeah, I would need an additional income to be able to do this. Or if I am so fortunate and blessed enough to be able to make this amount of money on my own, I would gladly take that and I would be very appreciative and gracious for that amount of income. But the idea is that I would be married and between me and my husband, we would make $250,000. And I think that's doable given what my current boyfriend does for a living and also what I do for a living and what I project both of our incomes to be over the next few years. And then the next assumption would be that we would save $200,000 of that every single year. And so we would only have $50,000 to live off of. But by saving $200,000 a year, that would get us to the point of retiring after 5.6 years. If I were to be able to save $200,000 every single year, I will be able to reach my goal of $1.4 million by um, age 37 or 38. And so that gives me a little bit of wiggle room and potentially I could even make more money or be able to save more money and maybe even get to the goal even faster. But I think it's definitely reasonable if I am saving large amounts of money to be able to retire with a nest egg of $1.4 million by the age of 40. Those are my financial goals, the goals that I hope to will actually will achieve i need to start speaking you know into existence so those are the goals that i will achieve within the next three to eight years in order to get myself to the point where i can retire early by the age of 40. so i hope that you enjoyed this video and you figured out some things that maybe you need to put into place to allow yourself to retire early. And even if you don't want to retire early, these are just some great financial things that you can do, like buying a house that will set your family up and yourself up for great success. So I hope you were able to pick up some tips for some you know, long-term goals that you need to put into place. And remember, I wanna know what's your major financial goal that you want to achieve within the next five years. So drop down in the comment section and make sure that you leave that there. And I hope that you liked this video. And if you did, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. It lets me know that you liked the video. And it'll also let other people know that this is a great video to watch. So go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. And if you're interested in more videos like this from me, go ahead and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can be notified when I put out more videos like this. I really appreciate you for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.